Let's take this and set it equal to zero. All right, as far as factoring this, um, this is a trinomial, and we're, we're used to working with these when they're quadratic equations and the first term is x squared, but it's really not that much different with x to the fourth because x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. So I'm looking here, and I see that I have a positive term here and a negative here, and the only way to get that is if I'm multiplying a negative times a negative, that gives me a positive. And yet, when I sum up the outer and inner terms after multiplying, I'll get a negative term here. Factors of 8 are 1 and 8, and 2 and 4. And I need them to add up to 6. So if I added negative 2 and negative 4, I'm going to get negative 6. So I know that these are the factors that I want to use. OK. I can't do anything more with this, so I'm just going to leave this as it is. However, this is the difference of two squares, so I can factor that out a bit more to this. Okay, so using the zero product property, x squared minus 2 equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0, or x plus 2 equals 0. So starting with these easier ones, x equals 2, x equals negative 2. I found two zeros. Now I'm going to look over here, x squared equals 2. Taking the square root of both sides gives me x equals plus or minus the square root of 2. All right, so I have four zeros. I have zeros at x equals 2, negative 2. And then this is, uh, square root of 2 is approximately 1.4. So let's rewrite that as 1.4 and negative 1.4 to help me with the graph. So plotting those out, I have a 0 here at 2, a negative 2, and then another one at 2. I have a 0 here at 1.4 and negative 1.4. OK, I need a few more points to complete my graph. So right up here, let's find f and x and f of x. When x is negative 1, if you work this out, you get 1. You get negative 6, because this x squared would just be 1, plus 8. So it's going to give you 9 minus 6, or 3. When x is 0, that cancels, that cancels, that becomes 0. That leaves me with 8 right here. And then finally, when x is 1, this will be 1, minus 6, plus 8. So again, I'll have 3. All right, so when x is negative 1, f of x is 3. When x is 0, f of x is way up here, uh, about here at 8. And then, so 8 would be right about here. Okay. And then when x is 1, f of x is 3. So I'm going to connect these points, and I'm also going to use my knowledge of end behavior. And since this is an even degree, both ends are either going to point up or down. And since this is a positive leading coefficient, both ends will actually be up. So when x is very small, y is going to be large. And then I know that, right, so after this point, I know that I'm going to go up because when x is very large, y is going to be very large. After this point, I'm going to continue on up because when x is small, f of x is going to be very large because it's an even degree with a positive leading coefficient. Now, checking that I have degree 4, since this is degree 4, the m greatest number of relative maximums and minimums I'm going to have are 3. And I have a relative minimum there. I have a relative minimum, a maximum here. And I have a relative minimum here. So I found all three relative maximums and minimums. So again, finding the zeros, I found one, two, three, four zeros. Then I plotted a few other points to give me the shape of the graph. I used my knowledge of end behavior to figure out what's going on out here and here. And then I just verified that I had the generally correct shape by seeing that I would expect at most three relative maximums and minimums. And I found that I had all three. That concludes this session of Educator.com on analyzing the graphs of polynomials. And I will see you again next lesson.